So the animation, sorry, the applications that we're building now are becoming more and more complex. And so animation is starting to have an even bigger role in those applications. At Web Directions last week, Courtney Hemphill did a really awesome talk about algorithms for animation and how if we build nice, natural feeling animations that are part of our application, they actually make them much more pleasant to use. And we can use animation as a tool to communicate to users the context of what they're doing. So when your user clicks on a screen and something appears, they can actually see through the animation the effect that their action had and where that thing came from. Now, I work for CultureAmp, and we've just started introducing React components over the last few months. So I've had some fun trying to get some animations going. Um, now, my first experience, my first adventure with animations in React, it actually left me feeling pretty smug because it was quite straightforward. And within a short space of time, I had it going. And it looks a bit like this. So this is our reporting, part of the application. We wanted to have some filters over on the left-hand side of the screen you can see here. And we wanted to animate them as they were added. And when the user clicked to remove them, they would be removed with an animation. But maybe you saw on there that when the user clicked, it wasn't the same filter that got removed. I'll just show you again. I don't think I could have actually done that if I'd have been trying. <laughs> So what I wanted to talk, to talk to you about today was how to use CSS transitions in React components successfully, how to avoid this kind of unwanted effect, and how it's different to using CSS transitions and other types of transitions and animations in traditional applications. So when we think about adding animations to our apps, what we often think about is doing it in response to something the user does. So this is a pretty typical example. We want to add things in. I mean, I think the probably most coded application now is the to-do list. It's pretty typical. You want to add um, elements in, and they appear, or remove them, and they animate when they disappear. And what we've done in the past is to use something like this, some JavaScript. jQuery has given us some, uh, some tools, which we've probably used and abused. Animate, fade in, fade out. Um, and we get this nice control with JavaScript. Now, one of the problems with this is that, as most of you know, JavaScript runs on a single thread. So if you've got something else happening and your animation needs to change and redraw the screen, it's going to have to wait until whatever other JavaScript is running. And while your, application, while your animation is running, then that's going to block anything else for the time when it's redrawing. And redrawing the DOM with jQuery is pretty expensive. So along came CSS transitions. And here's an example of some code that we might write to use CSS transitions. So we know that CSS has the advantages where it can use the hardware, it can use the browser GPU. And the browser is written, this is their job, right, to draw the screen. So they're way more efficient at it than jQuery is. So we might as well use their expertise and let them redraw our animations at the right time. There's newer frameworks out now that actually there's a move back to JavaScript. One of the problems with CSS is we don't get that same kind of fine-grained control to tell the browser exactly what we want it to draw at any given time. So frameworks like Velocity or Greensock are now using the request animation frame UI um, and making even better, more fluid animations. But this is a CSS group, so I'm going to stick with CSS for tonight. Um, and I'm going to talk about how React is different. Now, as you saw from the last example, what we usually do with the CSS is that we would add the class to the element or do something similar so that we can then control our CSS transitions from one class to another. But in React, it has a virtual DOM. So it maintains this list of elements that should exist in the real DOM. And when they change, it redraws the real DOM. Its virtual DOM is based on the state of your React component. And that can be anything from the actual elements, like you know, your to-dos that you have to do, or the state, such as whether it's enabled or disabled, or any text that appears on the page. All of those things are contained in your state. And then when you change it, you just tell React, this is how this thing should look now with this given state. And React decides when it's time to redraw the DOM. 
Now, one of the downsides of this is that when you add an element into your state, React is going to choose the point when it redraws it. So you don't get a chance to add that CSS class so that you get a nice transition in and out. What we have to do in React is we have a different model. We have, a, we have to give it a type of component that knows how to animate those elements in and out, and then we put our, our elements or our state for the elements inside them. So this is an example React component. Um, and what you have inside the render function here is that we're returning a JSX template. So some of that hopefully looks reasonably familiar to most people. We have our usual divs, HTML, tags, and then this React CSS transition group, which is the special React component that knows how to animate the things inside it. And then what we're doing in the, the line in the middle there is just creating a node component, a note component for each of the individual notes in our state. And so this is just to pull out the actual JSX template here. So as I said, with the, if we want to animate elements in React or components, we have to wrap them in this, either the React CSS transition group or something that knows how to do those animations. The React CSS transition group actually works by when an element is added into the state, it draws it in the DOM and it adds a class to it. So we're passing it this node transition name, that's our transition name. And then it will add a CSS class, which has that transition name, and the enter, dash enter suffix. It adds that straight away, and then after that, it adds another class that's enter active. So we define these CSS classes like this, and we just put our transitions inside the CSS. So when your node gets added, React controls the point at which the class gets added to it, then the enter active class gets added, and it moves the transition from one to the other. When the element then is taken out of the state and React redraws its DOM, first of all, it adds the transition leave class, then the transition leave active class, and then when the transition is completed, then it removes the element from the DOM for you. So you can see this working in the dev tools here. So as you add and remove notes, you're going to see these classes being added at the bottom here before the element is added or removed, or before it appears or is removed. Now, if you've worked with CSS transitions, you probably also know the transition end event is pretty notoriously unreliable. And in older versions of React, what it was actually doing in the JavaScript was waiting for that event to be fired before it moved on and started activating your next piece of JavaScript. Um, this meant if the user changed the tabs, for example, or if you're a bit silly like me sometimes and you forget to define your classes, then the event doesn't get fired. And so your JavaScript, your components end up in a pretty silly state. The most recent version of React, they fixed this by adding in something that you can pass to your component, like a timeout. So you say, I expect my transition to be finished within like five, or, well, five seconds would be a bit slow, but one second. And then it, it picks up and moves the JavaScript on regardless whether that event fires or not. So another thing to watch out for is that if you're animating React components, you need to make sure that each of the ones that you're going to add into the state has a unique ID. I discovered that using the array index of an element is not really a unique ID. It's not a very good idea. It does change because as you add and remove elements, the order in the array changes. So that's how I managed to get this kind of cool effect where the wrong one was being removed. We use a function in Lodash, a utility function called unique ID now, and it, doesn't, it actually works properly, thank goodness, for our users. Um, so the React transition group is pretty cool. It gives you a good, the React CSS transition group, I should say, because there is a separate component called the React transition group. Um, it gives you a good way of hooking into the CSS transitions that you're used to using. If you feel like that's not really going to be powerful enough for you, there are some alternatives. So the React transition group without CSS gives you hooks into the React component lifecycle, and you can decide what to do with your component at each step along the way as things are being added or being removed. And there's also a really good JavaScript library called React Motion, which I'm going to be talking about next week at MelbJS. Melb and um, that works with the request animation frame. And it has some really cool physics like calculations in it that makes it do some really nice, natural feeling animations within the components. And this is just a little preview of some of the things that you can do with that. There's uh, one of the other nice things it does. There's one here with um, moving balls on a screen where if it gets halfway through the transition, rather than and you, and you drop the thing, then it kind of goes back to where it was, where it started. So if you don't finish the animation, it doesn't have to go all the way through, which is another interesting thing with the CSS transition group. 
So in conclusion, um, if, you do, if you're using React or if you think it looks like kind of fun and you want to have a go and you want to try some animations, at least now hopefully you have a, a bit more of an idea, you're a bit better prepared than I was with the CSS transition group. It is really, really straightforward to get started with. And if you do want to hear more about this React Motion library, then please do come along next week. And that's it.